Hello and welcome to the Digital Classroom Teacher. Today I want to show you a tutorial on, well first, an introduction to what Digo is, how it can be useful for you or a group of teachers you're working with, and how to use it, all of its features that might make it easier and more uh, interesting to you than just a simple list of bookmarks. So, what is it? It is more than a simple list of bookmarks but it is kind of a bookmarking system. So if you go to digo.com, and that's all it is, D-I-I-G-O, you can sign up. And if you press the sign up button, you will be given this premium plan screen. Just choose free for now. You can think about whether or not you wanna pay for the additional features at some later point. Now, I've already created an account, so that's why you see my username and password auto-filling in those boxes. So you'll just pick a username like teacher, 101 <laughs> it's already taken whoa email well whatever your email is and a password then you're going to verify that you're not a robot and then you can create your account now i will mention that once you've created your account it's not the last step in getting the tool to work it will send you an email to verify that that email is real you press a link that it gives you in that email and then your account will look normal when you try to sign in and what i mean is once you go to the sign in button your screen should look something like this. Now it'll have some notes that gives instructions, but because we already have instructions here in this video, we're going to forget about those steps. In fact, I've already deleted them. I just started with something clean with a couple bookmarks that I picked already. But let's pick something new. Let's say, how how do we add bookmarks? What, how do we use this tool? What, what's happening in front of me? Well, you can do this in two ways. You can press the plus button and add a bookmark and just type in a URL or paste it in from a, a copy command that you made, or you can simply go to Google extensions. I'm just going to Google search Google extensions or Chrome extensions is what I could have put. Let's type in Digo. And then the top one here, the top hit at 803 ratings, Digo web collector, capture and annotate. We're going to just press plus to add that to Chrome, add the extension. And then as soon as we press that, it's going to check for a while. It'll probably work to install it, and boom, there it is. So once it's there, the first time you click it, it's going to bring you to their kind of advertisement page. It'll show you briefly what it can do. But after that first click, this extension will work like this. A window will pop up, and it'll give you different options for whatever web page you're on. So let's say we had an interesting article. I don't know. Let's go to Scientific American. I'm a fan of that one myself. Now, this might not necessarily be relevant to everyday classroom work, but maybe you find an interesting article there. Um, let's say sustainability. You're teaching something about the environment. Oh, climate change cited as trigger for war. Maybe that's a debate you're going to be making for the class, and you think that could be an interesting article. Or something you want to share as a potential project uh, topic with your fellow teachers. Well, once you're here, oh, this website might actually have some kind of uh, cookie situation going on. So let's go back and forth. Maybe that'll fix it. Yeah, sometimes some web pages act goofy, but that's not Digo's fault. That's Scientific American's code. <laughs> so now that we're refreshed on this page and it's looking normal, let's press Digo and let's just bookmark it. Let's save it. We can add tags so other teachers can find it in our group or that we can search it later. So I'm going to put science. I'm going to put climate, um, global warming. And if we had a group of teachers we were already in, we could share it and it would show up in here in the group um, section, but we don't have a group. So for now, let's just press save. Now, once it's there, we can go back to our Deagle library and without even refreshing the page, it appears automatically. And now for now on, when we wanna press uh, or find this link again, we just click it and we go right there. Now, what's more is that now that you've accessed it through Digo, on this page, you can annotate sections. We have to use our extension for this. We can annotate the article. We have to reload the page, however. You know, if it tells us a prompt like you have to reload the page, then just listen to it, and then the tool will work. So now let's say we really liked a particular paragraph, like this one. I didn't even read it, but let's just say it was interesting. And now you have all these options. You can add an arrow to point to a specific part in the paragraph. 
Ooh, uh, let's say Trump administration. Let's put an arrow to that. Maybe we can talk about that in class. Or maybe not. Maybe that's too sensitive. <laughs> and we'll talk about something else. But we can press escape and just leave the annotation tool right then and there. We can also add a note to the page or edit the page rather. Um, but no, we can add a note ourselves as well. We go back to a note here. We can put text on instead of an arrow. And now when we, we can type right on here. I do not agree. Or... <laughs> What do you think we should do about this paragraph or what have you? Is this paragraph too complicated for the lesson? So now when another teacher reads it or when you look at it in the future, you'll have a note that was on your mind when you were reading this article or whatever. Use your note system however you wish. Now the other aspects of this site, if we go back to Digo, is that you, can't, you can do more than just save uh, articles you can actually save things as PDFs. For instance, I already saved one here from the Virginia Department of Education. So now that we have a PDF saved, it's just along our list along with other websites. So instead of being a URL, it's its own PDF document that we can look at just like as if we saved a PDF on our computer. Very useful, very good system, especially if you use the tags, you can quickly find a whole host of things. Like if you labeled a bunch of articles, um, unit on civil war or civil war by itself as a tag then you can get a bunch of different resources in one view filtered out from hundreds of resources you might have on other things now if you wanted to share this with other p teachers then it's pretty simple you can just create a group so you go to my groups you can create a group name it whatever you want go through the different options who can view and then once you've created it you can share it with your fellow teachers. So it's really a constant online resource that won't go away and it's pretty secure um, and it looks good. It looks clean, um, it's very intuitive. It's uh, just a great way to bookmark for a group of people. Thank you for joining me. I hope that was um, clarifying and not confusing too much. Explore it on your, at your leisure. You might find out things that I haven't. Thank you for watching.